Today we get the chance to do something pretty cool. We are going to read over the source code for an actual piece of malware that was actually used to steal stuff in real life and was actually being sold on the dark web. This is not stuff that I wrote, this is stuff that somebody else wrote and the source code was leaked. We are going to take a look at Titan Stealer, which is an information stealer that was leaked quite some time ago. Um, I found the source code of it on VX Underground, which hosts a ton of malware source code that I'm actually going to be going over soon. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to highlight here and kind of the core purpose of this video is to highlight just how simple real life malware can be. Now we're not looking at stuff that's, you know, poning like enterprise networks. We're not looking stuff at stuff that's going to really be good at evading a lot of EDR. We're looking at a piece of malware that was actually used in real life, was used to make people a lot of money, was used to actually hurt a lot of people, and is incredibly simple in the way that it's made up. So let's take a look at the main.go. Now this is written in Go. Um, obviously this channel mainly does Rust stuff. I used to do a lot more Go stuff. But you'll find that the source code itself is fairly well written and fairly clear. Um, mainly because Go is a pretty simple language, at least in the syntax and the way that it looks. Um, there is one function that is a little bit more complex that we'll take a look at. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because frankly I don't understand it and I want to do a little bit of reversing on it to kind of understand it better before I talk out of my ass. Um, but let's dive into the main.go. Now, I'll go ahead and level with you. Basically all this is doing is continuously looping over files, adding them to a zip file that is then going to be base64 encoded and sent off to a hard-coded C2. Seriously, that's it. So let's take a look at desktop underscore wallets. Now, a lot of these are constants that are configured in, let's see, so desktop underscore wallets is defined here. So this is the conf.go file where they're defining a lot of their constants. So this is where the domain is going to go for the C2. This is where the ID is going to go. This is where a lot of other stuff is going to go. Um, so, you know, as you can see, the domain is hard coded here, the port is hard coded here, and this desktop underscore wallets is right here, and that just kind of defines desktop underscore wallet. I don't really know why they're doing this trimming of the dollar sign thing. I think it's to kind of hide the way the strings look in memory um, whenever you're running like the strings command against it, but that still is kind of an odd way to do it. So let's see. Let's look at main.go, and if desktop underscore wallets does not equal off, then basically it's going to loop through a couple of directories and you know essentially figure out you know where all of the wallets are and export those over into this zip file. So this writer um, is basically where all of this is going to be written out and then eventually sent off over to um, the C2 itself. So that's just a zip file that's eventually going to be base64 encoded and sent off. Um, it's also going to do the same exact thing for installed software. My thinking here is basically if you are using this stealer, you already have an initial access mechanism. So that might be, you know, you purchased access through some other stealer. There might be a loader that already had access to the machine. And you might find in the list of installed software something juicy. Like maybe you find SQLite is installed or you know Postgres is installed. And you say to yourself, okay, well, if this is installed, they're probably running databases. So maybe I want to go back and regain access to this machine and dump the database. So this installed software list right here could have some you know super, super juicy information that you might wanna use later on. Then it is going to start loop looping through browsers. So this is where it's going to start stealing cookies that you know they're going to sell on dark web or you know use for you know further access, um, which you know always is fun. That's where a lot of the actual harm happens. Um, it's also looking at autofills, which I thought was kind of cool. So anytime the browser automatically fills something, um, then it's going to be able to grab that, as well as your browser history, which everybody should be terrified of. Um, then it's going to do basically the exact same thing for Chromium browsers instead of just Gecko browsers. Now let's loop down here. It's also looking at passwords. So anytime you've got passwords that are stored, you know, within a Chromium browser, it's going to pull those out, which, you know, also not ideal, as well as your browser history, the autofills, and then it's going to start looking at your Binance wallets and things like that. 
Um, so that's where it's going to store a lot of information about your Bin Binance wallets and your Binance account. Um, it also does Steam, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, so it's looking at, you know, your Steam files and trying to pull out, you know, login information for Steam. I'd imagine they're probably selling those accesses, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, then we've got some more, you know, basic wallet stuff. Um, I'm kind of skipping through this stuff because functionally it's doing the exact same thing just in different directories. It's literally just looping over directories and looping over text files, pulling that information out, throwing it into this zip file. That's that's really it. Um, I'm not trying to trivialize it and say that it's stupid or whatever, but I'm basically saying like, it doesn't have to be more complex than this. Again, this actually worked. Um, I thought it was kind of in interesting that they're pulling FTP data as well. So, you know, things like FileZilla, they're trying to pull, you know, login information, I'm assuming, for FileZilla, which I thought was, you know, not ideal. We're also grabbing, it looks like, files from the desktop. Yeah, so it's pulling all of the stuff from your desktop and throwing it into, you know, a, a folder. Um, same thing for downloads, your Telegram conf config stuff. Um, and again, I'm just skipping through this because it's it's literally the same thing over and over again. Now, the one thing right here, this is the one thing that I kind of wanted to highlight and say that this isn't as easy. Um, I don't really understand exactly how the screenshot um, functionality works. So if we go over here to screenshot.go, um, it's a little bit more complicated. And again, I want to kind of look at this and understand how it works before I do a full review of it. Um, I might actually implement it within my Rust malware. We'll kind of see about that. Um, but it's a little bit more complex. Now, if you're mad at me at this point for, you know, running through this code really fast, I'm going to share a link to the VX Underground's, you know, repo that has the Titan Stealer source code in it. Um, so you can go and take a look at it yourself. You know, I'm just kind of speeding through this to kind of highlight how simple a lot of this stuff is. So if we go back to, let's look at installed soft. So that's just the installed software. Again, it is this easy. It's just iterating over your installed software directory and program files x86 and appending the name of the file to it. Doesn't get any simpler than that. Let's take a look at send log. So, so send log is what is actually sending the information. As you can see, it is taking a byte string or a, a byte array, encoding it using base64, creating the headers, and sending it off <laughs> via a post request to you know, the uh, C2. Doesn't get any simpler than that. It doesn't have to be any more difficult than that. If your goal is to just throw stuff onto, you know, end user machines and you're not really worried that much about getting caught, you're not really worried that much about, you know, AV, EDR, stuff like that, it can be this simple. And that's, again, kind of the thing I wanted to highlight. It's not just for the folks who, you know, are constantly leaving, um, you know, messages about, you know, oh, this is too simple. Oh, you need to get more complex. It's not just about those folks. It's about kind of the ideology in general about like, we want to focus on the most complex malware. We want to look at the stuff that's doing all of the complex, scary stuff. When in reality, this stuff is working. Like we're not really stopping this stuff as well as we should be, you know, for how simple it is at least. That's about it. I'm going to be doing more um, malware source code reviews in the future because VX Underground is awesome and they deserve a lot of respect. Um, yeah, take it easy.